You are a committed developer and understand that unit tests allow you to test the correctness of code and make sure everything keeps working after you make changes. But many code is hard to test because often code and tests are written in the wrong order. This causes some code not to be tested at all. In this video I will show you a simple trick that makes writing unit tests much more enjoyable and as a bonus will let you write better code. In this tutorial I create a class that can store and retrieve user settings. I want to know if the get and set methods operate correctly. I create an instance and call the set method. An error occurs. Self.settings is not initialized in the class. I add a class initializer that creates an empty dictionary for the settings. The error is gone. But notice I had to execute the code to find out about the problem. An error like this could have been spotted early on by testing if a new settings class has a settings dictionary. I will create this test later, but first I add functionality to load settings from a JSON file. I add a settings storage class that can load JSON from a settings file. The settings class also gets a load method that instantiates the settings storage class and uses it to load the settings. I call load. The next error occurs. There is no settings file yet. Notice that all I wanted to do is to check if these two methods work and suddenly I'm dealing with text files on my hard disk. This code is coupled and coupled code is one of the reasons why testing can be so frustrating. Under time pressure it might even be impossible to deal with this problem properly. So I delete the code and start all over. The first problem was that a new settings instance does not have an empty settings dictionary. I write a test for that. I run the test with the following command. The test failed. Notice that the test tried to execute the settings class, but it ran into the same problem as when I tried to execute the code manually. The code crashed with an attribute error, and I first need to fix the problem again by adding a class initializer that creates a settings dictionary. From this moment, the code will not crash anymore and I can start testing for its correctness. Look at the test again. The goal is to test if a new settings object has an empty settings dictionary. I run the test again. As you can see, the test succeeds. So the test was created around the same time as the code was. But for the next test, I'm going to do something different. I will create a second test to test code that does not exist yet. I create a settings instance, call load and check if I can get a test key with the test value. I create the load method in the settings class. As you see, the load method has no implementation yet and the test should fail. Let's check that. The test failed because the get method could not find the test key and returned none. Now all effort will go into making this test succeed. But how? If the load method would create an instance of setting storage, the test would need a JSON file. But how can you switch between test and runtime JSON files? The answer? You don't. It is usually a bad idea to load data from files, databases or the network in unit tests. The reason for this is simple. If a test relies on external data, 
what happens when that data is changed. So tests should preferably work with hard-coded data to prevent accidental changes. So instead of making runtime JSON and test JSON, I will inject a completely different setting storage object at test time. But for this, I have to decouple my code first. And this is the crux to writing unit tests. Not only does it test your code, it also forces you to refactor coupled modules. And I guess that if you hate tests, you are probably testing coupled systems. What are the symptoms of testing a coupled system? Required connections to database, file system and network. Tests can only run when the system is connected. And there is a second interesting symptom. Useless tests. Look at the code. The developer uses the upper method that is built into the Python standard library. Then a test checks if the Python standard library method did the correct thing. And right now you think I am exaggerating, but I'm not. I've seen people write tests like this when their code was untestable and yet a certain amount of tests were required by the business. The solution to this problem is to start with the test and then implement the code. But before I can write the next test, I need to prevent the settings class from having to instantiate a settings storage instance. And the way I do that is through dependency injection. The settings class initializer gets a storage object that is stored in an attribute. Now the load method calls storage.load. At runtime, the program can now inject a settings storage class instance as written before. But for the test, I create a mock settings storage class. and pass it when creating the test setting instances. I run the test again. Very nice. From this point you can write more tests for the settings class if you want. You have seen the obvious benefit of testable code. But if there's one thing you really need to take away from this video is that unit tests force you to decouple your code, which is a huge bonus. And that's all for this video. For more Python tutorials, click one of my other videos. Thanks for watching.